Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of differential calculus, also known as Calc 1. All material has an assumed prerequisite of pre-calculus and a full semester course in trigonometry. A thorough review of prerequisite topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them in all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is a continuation of a video and it almost seems disjoint from uh, a video I just did on linear approximations. And in some way, it is sort of disjoint from that. Uh, so this is all about differentials, those elusive beasts, these dy's and dx's. What are they? Well, let's spend a moment really talking about what they are. We'll define them after this, but let's spend a moment really investigating what a differential truthfully is. Let's suppose we were given a function and this function is just f. So that's f of x, the function. And let's also suppose that we want to create a tangent line approximation. That's why it's kind of tied with the previous video. Let's suppose that we want to make a tangent line approximation at, um, let's say this point right here. And let's label this point, uh, why not, right? So this point we'll call A comma F of A. We're building a tangent line at that point. And I've drawn the tangent line in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that tangent line to approximate the value of the function nearby. Again, that's why it's kind of linked into the previous section. But when we do this, we take a little step forward in the X direction, right? Like we're not evaluating the tangent line at A, that'd be silly. We want to evaluate the tangent line at a point slightly away from A. How far away? We'll call it a delta X away. So let's go ahead and draw in a horizontal line, a horizontal step, if you will, of size delta X. So I'll draw this in and maybe I'll use a uh, blue for that just because, um, well, it just makes sense too. So. I don't know why it even makes sense. Oh, by the way, that line is one degree. I don't want to do that. I didn't even see that. So let me go ahead and do that again. There we go. We're taking a step size. Let's just say that size. It's, it's, it's huge. That's obviously a massively large step, but let's just pretend that that's the size we want. So this distance right here, we're going to go ahead and call uh, Delta X. Let me move this off my screen. Otherwise my pen will be drawn to it like a magnet. So here we go. That's delta x, just a change in x. That's all we're doing. And of course, if that's our change in x, if we wanna get back to the function, we would have a corresponding change in y. So let me go ahead and showcase that corresponding change in y. It looks like, oops, that. Again, I'm gonna zoom out to throw this off to the side and I'll zoom right back in. So here's our corresponding change delta y, the true change in y. That's actually the true change in y. In fact, I'll write that in. And you can see I'm just labeling this point up here, a plus the wiggle, and that's the function evaluated at a plus that wiggle. And our change in y value is uh, the distance between these two y values, uh, this guy right here and this guy right here. That's what delta y actually is. So delta y technically is just the difference between f of a plus delta x minus f at a. Now that's not that important to talk about, but I just want to say that. But what we're going to do is use our tangent line to approximate that change in y. So rather than using uh, delta y, which is a true value of the change, and that would also require us to evaluate our function at a plus delta x, and often we don't want to do that because our function might be pretty gnarly. Instead, we'd like to approximate the change using this y value. And that y value is a smaller wiggle. That is going to be dy. That's what we're going to define to be dy. And if you think about what dy is, as far as um, geometrically what we have here, it is the slope or the numerator for the slope of that green tangent line. So the slope of that tangent line, remember, the slope of the tangent line, let me point an arrow at it. 
There we go. The slope of the tangent line is f prime of a, but remember the slope is just rise over run. And here in this picture, we're rising dy on that green line when we ran delta x. So this is the same as dy over delta x. Now, funny little thing about delta x. Delta x actually is the same thing as a dx if you take your slices small enough. So just as an aside, I'll write it this way, aside, delta x is equal to dx for small enough. Uh, well, I'll just, I'll just leave it like that. I'm not going to really worry too much about that statement. And so therefore, this is going to be dy over dx. These are two separate quantities right now. And so that tells me that if I want to find out what dy is, knowing the wiggle in dx, I could approximate or find the value of dy by multiplying both sides by dx and you get f prime of a dx. Well, what does that mean? That means our real change in y, which is approximately our small change in y, our approximate change in y there, that red one, is f prime at a times dx. And actually that's not the true definition because it's usually f prime of x dx, but for right now, for our geometric description, it's going to work very nicely. One other aside I need to mention here. While it is true that delta x is going to be dx for our purposes, delta y is not dy. They're different. You can actually see them right here. Delta y is what we want our actual change to be. That's the, oh, sorry, that's what the actual change in y is. dy is an approximation to that. Our step size though in x direction, well, that is, there's no way to approximate that. That is actually the step. So our step size uh, is delta x and dx simultaneously. Now that confusion aside, here is the actual definition of a differential. If y is a function of x, where f is differentiable, then the differential dx is an independent variable. And remember what I just said a moment ago, dx is the same thing as delta x for us. It's not actually going to be true forever. Usually deltas are reserved for large uh, intervals or larger intervals. And D for that DX is reserved for very small intervals. But generally speaking, when you're approximating um, a function using its tangent line, your little wiggle size in X is pretty small. So that's okay. Um, anyway, that DX is an independent variable and the differential DY is then defined in terms of dx by this wonderfully awesome equation. Now, a lot of students remember this equation very simply by doing division. They remember it by saying, oh, look, that means that dy over dx is equal to f prime of x. And while mathematically, I'm sorry, symbolically that's true, mathematically, if I started you off with a dy dx, uh, and it is true, dy dx is f prime of x, you technically cannot separate that dy and that dx if it's called a derivative, like the derivative with respect to x of y. Technically speaking, you should not be able to multiply both sides by dx, but not that big of a deal. Most people visualize it that way, so it's not a huge deal. Um, I fought the fight for years, but I finally gave up on it. Uh, and I'm just willing to say, uh, you can visualize it that way, um, so that it helps you remember the formula that you can visualize. Oh, dy dx is equal to f prime of x. Therefore, if I multiply both sides by dx, I get the formula. Yay. But that's actually not what's working here. Uh, but that's okay. So the wiggle in y is just f prime of x times the wiggle in x. And that is because f prime of x is rise over run and the rise in that small little triangle that we had up on the previous page was dy and the run was delta x which is dx so the rise is dy the run is dx so f prime at a technically is dy dx the over dx all right i don't need to say anything else with that but this is used, differentials are used to approximate wiggles in output rather than finding the exact value of a, of a wiggle or an error in output. 
you use a differential to approximate the error in what you just did. And there are some wonderful applications of this. And I have one at the very end to showcase what I mean. But before we get there, let's go ahead and do some mechanical examples. So find the differential dy and evaluate this for the given value of x and dx below. Well, the differential, again, because we just learned it, it's always nice to remind you, the differential is defined to be f prime of x dx. And remember in the uh, picture that we drew out, I had written it as dy is equal to f prime of a dx. The reason why I did that is because the rise over run of that triangle, I should say this triangle actually, the rise over run of this triangle right here, it's dy over dx. And it is the same as the derivative for f at a. And so that's why in my work here, it's not f prime of x dx, it's f prime of a dx. But trust me, we're going to be doing f prime of a dx in these problems. So back to this bad boy right here, let's go ahead and figure out what the derivative of our function is. I'll just do that off to the side here. So our function is y equals uh, x plus one over x minus one. So the derivative will be the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the denominator all over that denominator squared. So here we go. This is x minus x, negative one minus one. That's a negative two all over x minus one quantity squared. Let me just double check my mathematics. My negative one, negative one. Yep, that's it. So there is our derivative. So dy is going to be equal to uh, let's see, a negative 2 over the quantity x minus 1, and quantity, that looks like an equals, squared, and then dx. That's kind of our formula. But that only sits as a formula for a, a moment, because really you, you calculate that formula, but then you want to use it. We want to know what is dy when x is 2 and dx is 0.5. Visually, what this means is you have some curve that you're working on. Who knows what it is? Actually, we know what it is. It's that curve right there. But I'm not really drawing that curve. I'm just giving you a, a way to think about this. And what we're going to do is approximate the value at 2 using 2 plus a wiggle. And that wiggle size is 0 0.05 in this case. And we want to know how far off is our linear approximation from the actual value. So the linear approximation has this size of a wiggle right here, and the true value has this size wiggle. That's what we're doing. That's what the dx means is that, or I should say that's what the x means. It means I'd like to know what this function value is at two, and then somebody says, oh, no, 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 not two but two plus 0.05. And you say, yeah, oh yeah, that's what I meant. Two plus 0.05. And somebody else says, but wait, I bet you there's error. And you say, yes, there is. Well, I wonder what that error is, or I wonder what the wiggle size is, and that would be approximately dy. So dy is approximately delta y. So the cha true change in delta y is approximately dy, which is equal to f prime at the x value of two times dx, which they gave us a 0.05. That's our wiggle. And this is where we built our tangent line, basically. And the slope of that tangent line at two, we just computed the derivative right there. So let's go ahead and plug it in. It's gonna be a negative two over, plug in two, you get one squared. And then we have that 0.05 multiplying it. And so this is going to be a negative 0.1 when you compute it all out. So again, somebody says, uh, I want to evaluate this function and I don't want to evaluate it too. I want to evaluate it at 2.05. But how far off, if I just use the derivative, would I be from my current y value? In other words, what, what is the change in y using the derivative? And the change in y here 
this distance, which looks really terrible actually, sorry about that. This change in Y right here from our original Y value, we are, we just computed that to be actually because I'm not, this is not the actual function, uh, unfortunately. So <laughs> we computed that distance to be a negative 0.1. I get it, it's the wrong direction. I totally understand that because I didn't really graph the function. But the true value or the true change in the function value is different than that. We might as well just compute that true change in value. But the true change is f of 2.05 minus f of 2. And you could see immediately why I didn't want to use to evaluate my actual function at 2.05 because it's not going to be a fun computation. 2.05 plus 1 divided by uh, 2.05 minus one, and we're gonna subtract our function evaluated at two, so that's three over one. And what do we get? 3.05 divided by 1.05 minus three. And now I actually have to use a calculator for this. So once I have to grab a calculator, that tells me this computation was way too much for us to do uh, by hand, minus three. So, uh, and this is approximately negative 0.0952 and some change. So our dy of negative 0.1, which exhibit, tells us that we're, our y value changed by dropping by one tenth, is close. Our y value literally dropped by 0.0952 and change. All right, so that's how you would use the differential. However, most people at this point would look at this and say, uh, so, like, what does that gain me? It gains you a different way to, to estimate changes in output. Rather than actually computing the true change in output, we can estimate the change in output by using the derivative at a nearby point and multiplying it by how far we wiggled away from that nearby point. That's all. It's a lot faster to approximate the change in Y than to compute the actual change in Y. In fact, I'd like to write that down. I think that's that's important enough to state. So again, it is often much easier to approximate the change in Y, and that is done via dy, than it is to compute the actual change in Y. And the actual change is computed using the delta Y, which is F of A plus the wiggle minus F at A. And that's just a lot of computing there. So it's much easier to use the dy, which is just f prime of a dx. So that's why we would use a differential. Let's go ahead and do another non-application before we head into the applications itself, uh, just to see how this is, is worked. So um, compute delta y and dy for the given value of x and dx. Now, first of all, I do want to draw this out because I think that this is kind of important to see. So our function is um, a e to the x. So let me go ahead and just draw out an e to the x. Sorry that my screen keeps moving. That's me, my hand hitting the screen. I'll just turn that off now. And our function e to the x goes through 0, 1. It goes down like this forever. And it's exponential in the other direction. Obviously. It's exponential in both directions, to be honest with you. <laughs> and then uh, I will go ahead and um, do I want to draw a tangent line? Yeah, I might as well draw in the tangent line here. So let's draw in that tangent. And it'll look kind of gnarly, but we'll go ahead and do it. Uh, tangent I'll use green for again. So there's our tangent line. And by the way, recall, this is just kind of a, an interesting piece of information. E, is, e to the x is the only exponential function uh, with derivative equal to 1 at 0. It's kind of an interesting little piece of information. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use x equals zero to help us approximate what e to the 0.5 is, e to the zero plus 0.5. So essentially, uh, that's what delta x is. We're going to step over by a 0.5. And we want to know what is this actual value. But instead of finding the actual value, we're going to use this approximation using a tangent line. Now, the problem with using a tangent line approximation 
is that the change in y is not as great. This change in y is called dy, and the true change in y is called delta y. And by the way, the change in x is always called dx or delta x. They're both synonymous. So, so that's all we're saying. We built a tangent line at zero and we're wiggling by a size of 0.5. The true change in y is gonna be f at zero plus 0.5 minus f at zero. That's the true change in these y values. Cause again, that point right there is 0.5 comma f of 0.5, which is e to the 0.5. And the change in values is again, uh, the difference between these y values. E to the zeroth is just one, so I'm just gonna replace that with one. So let's go ahead and do that. That's e to the 0.5 minus one. And good luck in computing that by hand, if you're not going to, it's not fun. So then, instead of doing that, let's use the tangent line approximation to figure out what the rough estimate of the change in y is. So. This is approximately equal to the rough dy. And the rough dy is f prime evaluated at x dx. However, the x we're looking at where we built our tangent line is zero. And the dx, well that they've handed us to be a 0.5 because that's how far away we've, we've wiggled. What's nice about e to the x is its derivative is e to the x. And if you evaluate e to the x at zero, you'll get one. So that's one times dx, which is 0.5. And so this is going to be a 0.5. So what we're saying is this change in y is roughly 0.5. Now, if you were to grab a calculator, which I have one in my hand right now, uh, the value for this, and I have to figure out how to use this calculator, I rarely use these calculators. Oh, there we go. The true value is 0 0.65, that's rounded to the nearest hundredth. So we're pretty far off. Well, it's exponential. I mean, that's understandable. That function grows pretty quickly once you get past zero. So that's why we have that type of error, but that's okay. Still, we, we got practice using differentials. So notice the theme with the last, this video and the last video, it's Give me a tangent line at a nice point, and I will use that tangent line at that nice point to evaluate a function at a nearby point. Or, that was last video, in this video, uh, give me a tangent line at a nice point, and I'll use that tangent line at that nice point to tell you, or approximate, the change in y if we step over a little bit. That's all. That's all we're really doing, is approximating the change in output. Now, as we go into an application, it's important for us to talk about error because you're approximating a change in output. And so that can lead to some type of error. So the relative error in an approximation of a Y value, given the error Delta Y is defined to be Delta Y over Y. But because Delta Y is approximately DY, we get Delta Y over Y is approximately DY over Y. And the percentage error just multiplies that by a hundred. Now, conceptually, what does this mean? Um, if you have, let's just say a hundred items, and for some reason you wiggle the amount by a little bit, let's say by two, you have two out of a hundred or a 2% change. That's really what that is. However, if you're using an approximation, let's say our approximation was 1.5, then 1.5 out of, out of that 100 items would be 1.5 percent change. So anyhow, that's just kind of the change in value relative to how many items you have. Because if I tell you that, guess what I made today? A penny, or maybe not a penny, let's say $5. Well, that's $5 is not a lot in 2020, but if it was 1920, that is relatively speaking, a massive change in income flow. So uh, by normalizing it, that's, that's what a division by Y is called. It's normalizing the value. So you're talking in terms of what it means for you today, essentially, or in the situation that you're speaking about. So if it was, the change was one, let's say Delta Y was approximately one and Y was 
uh, 100, that's a 1% change. But if delta Y was one and Y was a million, well, nobody cares about that change, right? That's <laughs> one, one millionth is super small. So being able to uh, normalize it by dividing by Y tells you kind of approximately how big of a change really is that in terms of what we're talking about. Now we hit a really fun application, in my opinion. Estimate the amount of paint needed to apply a coat of paint a half or sorry, 0.05 centimeters thick to a hemispherical dome with a diameter of 50 meters. I'll just stop there because that's all I really need. The rest of it's just computing the error, but let's go ahead and focus on this part. Now with any word problem, what you want to do is draw a picture if you can. I've read the problem. If, if you've watched my video on related rates, you know an attack for uh, word problems is one, you've read it, okay, good. Two, try to understand it. Well, in this case, understanding this problem requires me to actually draw a picture. So let me take a moment here and draw a picture. And I've never claimed to be an artist, so don't yell at me, but that is my hemispherical dome. It's a half a sphere. And we're gonna say that dome has a diameter of 50 meters, which means it has a radius of 25 meters. So this distance right here is 25 meters. Probably the hardest part of this problem is really interpreting what does a coat of paint really do to an object? Uh, it increases something, but what does it increase? And some people will say it's surface area, and that's actually sort of true. It does actually semi increase the surface area. But in this case, we're going to say it's going to increase the volume of this. If you have a thick enough paint and 0.05 centimeter thick paint job is thick enough, a thick enough paint like that is going to give you a, uh, a volume, an increase in volume. So what do we want? We want to estimate the change in volume of this dome when we apply the paint. That'll tell us how much paint to buy. If the volume of the dome was, let's pretend, one cubic meter before, and after we paint it, it's 1.01 cubic meter, well, then we need one one hundredth of a cubic meter of paint. That's just how that works. It's kind of a neat way of doing this type of job. And if you think about that, delta V can be, that's an output, right? Volume is an output. If we know a radius, we have a volume for, formula for a sphere. The volume of a sphere uh, correct, is uh, four thirds pi r cubed, but that's for a full, whoops, r cubed. That's for a full sphere. We don't have a full sphere. We only have half a sphere. We have a hemisphere. So we have half a sphere. Well, that would be then two thirds pi r cubed. So we have an output V here, and we just wanna know how does that V, how does that output change when we apply this paint? And we can estimate that by looking at DV instead. That would be much easier than actually computing what our new volume is and subtracting off our old volume and having to grab a calculator and doing all that, which we still might have to grab a calculator to be honest with you. But let's go ahead and estimate the change in volume using the differential. Now we were given a few other or one other piece of information. The change in volume, or I should say actually change in, mm, do I want to call it? Yeah, I'll call it change in radius. Our change in radius is 0 0.05, but that's centimeters, not meters, that's centimeters. And remember, our problem is actually in meters. So let's change that to meters by reducing it even further by two decimal places. So 0005 meters. So that's our change in radius. This dome was 25 meters in radius. When we're done with the paint job, it will actually be 25.0005 meters in radius. And that's not that much of a change in radius, right? You might think, nothing, it's hardly anything. And I would agree with you, that's hardly anything it seems, but let's just see what happens here. So we're given DR, we wanna estimate DV. We were also given one other thing, by the way. We were given that the radius, uh, let me use black ink still, is equal to 25, again, meters. So if the radius is 25 meters, that'll help us out. 
All right, dv. Well, dv is v prime of r uh, dr. That's the definition for a differential. This guy right here. Instead of y's and x's, we have v's and r's. So it's dv is equal to v prime of r dr. So finding V prime is just a matter of taking a derivative here. That's gonna be, I'm looking at this guy right here. That's gonna be two pi R squared. That's it, uh, dr. All right, great. Now we can sub in, sub in, our value for R and our value for dr. So dV is equal to two pi. Our value for R is 25. Again, that's meters being squared. And our dr is 0 0.0005, again, that's meters. Notice what we get. Meters squared times meters is cubic meters. That is a volume. So this is definitely a change in volume. 25 squared is 625. Uh, multiply that by two, it's 1250. 1250 pi. Uh, times 0 0.0005 and then cubic meters. And as I mumbled out a few moments ago, you will likely need to grab a calculator at some point for a problem like this. So here we have it. I'm just going to multiply uh, this by, let's see, I'm just going to go th through and multiply all this stuff out while you're waiting, 0 0.0005. So I get the following. It's approximately. Uh, and I'll round to the nearest... Four decimal places. Why not? I don't know why. Just why not? 1.9635 cubic meters. Cubic meters, what does that mean? That's our change in volume. So our estimated change in volume is almost two cubic meters. Now, think about this. That's how much paint we're going to use almost two cubic meters of paint. To put this in perspective for my American students, a meter is roughly three foot, so, or three feet, if you want to pro properly pro pluralize that. And so you're doing two cubes, uh, three by three by three, or three foot cubes of paint. That's quite a bit of paint, actually. So, uh, this is a really, and it's it's true, that's how much paint you would use if you were to apply the paint to where it's 0 0.05 centimeters thick to a hemispherical dome of si radius uh, 25 meters. Anyway, I think that's pretty neat to interpret what the meaning is of your uh, result. Having two of those three by three by three cubes is uh, really pretty impactful, I think. Now, I think that second part is miswritten. And so instead of saying that, I'll cross all that out, I'll just say, how, relatively speaking, what is the, what is the error? Now recall from the error estimate over here that if you have delta Y over Y, that can be approximated by DY over Y. I'd actually like to spend a little bit of time at the very end of this video here to talk a little bit more about that. So in our case, we had a volume, oops, wrong pen. We had a volume and we had a radius. And you could talk about what's the relative error of our radius estimate and what's the relative error of our volume. Remember the volume of our hemisphere is two thirds pi r cubed. Now, if you think about the relative error in computing the volume, it would be delta V over V, but that's the true relative error or the, yeah, the true relative error. But let's go ahead and approximate that using DV over V. And when we computed DV, that was, what was it? Two pi R squared, all right? Yes, it is. And if you divide that by the actual volume, which is two thirds uh, pi r cubed. Oops, that dv is incorrect. It's two pi r squared, it, that's the derivative, but then we have to multiply that by dr. Remember, dv 
is equal to v prime dr. So I had to put that vr dr in there. Sorry about that. So reducing this down, we get the following. The twos will cancel beautifully. The pies cancel. The three will jump upstairs and we have over r dr. And in fact, I'd like to write it this way times dr over r. So what exactly does this mean? Well, it means that our error in computing the volume is three times our error in computing the radius or three times a relative error in computing the radius. And we were given that dr in our case was 0 0.0005 and the true radius was 25. So if you compute those, which I would need to grab a calculator, so that's what I'm doing right now, which just turned my calculator really wacky actually, because I dragged it across something, uh, times three divided by 25, you get, oh, that is nice. Equals 0 0.12345 amps. That was one too many. You get this. So our relative error in computing the volume is 0 0.00006, or in other words, 0 0.00, I'm moving that two decimal places, 6%. That's a very small percentage change in our volume. The percentage change in our radius, on the other hand, dr over r, that was 0 0.00, again, 0 0.05 over 25, and that computes out to be that much right there, which is, as a percent, 2 and a 2. About 2 thousandths of a percent. So, again, this is how much, percentage-wise, relative uh, change in our radius in that relative change in our radius created this type of relative change in our volume a 0.006% change in our volume not a huge change in the volume actually uh, anyhow that's how you could use those formulas if you want or if you're asked uh, you just follow that template basically not a huge deal I kind of like these problems they're really neat great way to approximate change in outputs. Again, this whole video is about how do outputs change and how can we approximate that change rather than computing it exactly. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are. Until you feel at peace Listen close Don't talk too much That isn't cold Sure You may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you To speak too loud and cry